Representative Duchesne, Senator Goodall, and members of the of this committee, Natural Resources Committee. It's been a long day, and uh, uh, my testimony will be very quick. Uh, just to give you a little background, my name is Norm Labby. I'm the superintendent of the Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port and Wells Water District. Uh, after I graduated from UMaine in 1976, that's pretty much for the last 33 years, what I've been doing is water. So I have a little bit of background in water. I've been currently at the Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port Wells Water District for 24 years. And, and every day uh, we're trying to do what's best for our customers and for the Branch Brook resource. But let me get to some points here. Uh, just to clear a few few facts up and comment quickly. Number one, I'm a citizen, not a corporate lobbyist. I'm here to protect what's best for Maine and the citizens and the environment of Maine. I, I'm not here to criticize any concerned citizens that might have come out with information that might be contrary to mine, but uh, nor will I use misinf misinformation or fear to sway you to do one thing or the other. I'm just here to present facts. Some simple points I'll just throw out, because there's other experts better than I, as in Mr. Fisk. It's hard to follow that act. He's right on. He's scientific. He's factual. I have a lot of respect for him. Some points here. Talking about, you know, the old uh, saying, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Well, technology, at this point, desalination costs about a half a cent a gallon. That's what it costs to desalinate the ocean, one half a cent a, ga a gallon. It's down from about a... A penny a gallon a while ago, and it's getting cheaper now as technology improves. So desalinization is half a cent a gallon. Just a factual number. I'm not going to conclude anything from that, let you make your own conclusions. We looked at it as an option for us, and that's a lot of money for us for raw water, because that's about what we sell our water for. Retail, half a cent a gallon. So we'd have to double our rates. But as far as people that really need water, it's a lot cheaper than what you might think. Okay. Another point, uh, Southern Maine Regional Water Council report was quoted. I was president of Southern Maine Reg Regional Water Council and helped coordinate the report. So I know it intimately, I know it inside and out. If you have any questions on it, please ask me. But the comments about protection were geared toward the Sebago Lake and Saco River because ultimately those will be the long-term supplies of Southern Coastal Maine. I don't say we don't need, I'm not saying we don't need protection. We're for protection of all water, but that's what the comments were for, is the Saco River and Sebago Lake, as ultimately 20, 40, 60 years, whatever, they will be the primary supply. Since 9-11, all the utilities are looking at interconnections and redundancy in supply, and that's partially why the report was done. That's partially why we're looking at Saco and Sebago as redundant supplies for southern Maine. Climate shifting. The University of Maine study was quoted. I just saw it the other day, and I think Physicians for Social Responsibility, there, there's a group in Maine, they even put it on their front page. The prediction, the primary prediction, the conclusion, was that Maine's going to get wetter in all seasons. Just a fact. I thought I'd throw it at you. Uh, another fact is if you go to Portland, you go to the National Weather Service in Portland and download this information from their website, Maine has gotten 20% wetter in the last 100 years. That's a fact. And we've also had two 200-year storms in the last three years. That's a fact. Another one. Geology is really a local issue. Uh, the aquifers in Texas, Michigan, California, they're not like Maine's. We are a very wet state. We have a lot of gravel, sand, bedrock, water, swamp. That's what Maine is. There's a lot of water here. To give you an example of water in Maine, to just put a size on this, okay? Uh, Bob Marvini, the state's geologist, uh, w gave a couple talks in southern Maine. He had some interesting statistics. One of them is on Maine, every year we have 24 trillion gallons of water fall on Maine. Of that, about 4 trillion, roughly, makes it in the groundwater. If you were to take a ream of paper, you all see a ream of paper about that thick, 500 sheets? Veronica, you don't have one, do you? <laughs> they all know what it is, okay. A ream of paper is that thick, 500 sheets. And you say, that, that's the gallons in our aquifers, all right? That's what's recharged every year in our aquifers, that ream of paper. All water utilities in Maine take out one sheet of that, and all bottled water companies are taking out this much of one sheet. That's the magnitude of what we're talking about with groundwater in Maine. Not talking surface water, that's two to three times the volume. We're talking four trillion gallons out of the 24 trillion here. Utilities take one sheet out of that ream of paper. Bottled water industry has taken this much, one-tenth of a sheet. It's fact. Just had to give you an example to just point it out. 
Uh, obviously, there are some other agendas here. The primary agenda should be protection of our natural resources and doing what's best for the, for the uh, residents, the environment, and the taxpayers in Maine. What we tried to do in our neck of the woods, I really, my trustees would rather I not tout what we did, but all I can say is what we did was, in, we, we felt, and I still feel today, in the best interest of the watershed that we manage and have managed since 1895, and in the best interest of our customers. We have to balance environmental responsibility and fiscal responsibility to our ratepayers and our taxpayers. I think the current structure we have does a good job of that. If anything, we are very regulated here in Maine already. Uh, compared to other states. And I think I'm not complaining about that. With respect to water, we are well regulated. It's covering it. And I, I just echo Mr. Fisk on what he said. Uh, that's about all I've got. I know it's been a long day. I'm not going to repeat what was said otherwise. But if you have any questions, I'd love to answer any. Uh, thank you, Mr. Labby. Are there any questions? Representative Edgecombe? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been hours since I've asked the questions. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, very interesting facts, and they're Penny a, a half a penny a gallon. Is there any value to the salt that's taken out of seawater? Well, it, salt is, uh, yeah, there is a little bit, but it, salt is so plentiful in the world, it's really not an expensive commodity item. But there is some. People have used it on roads and stuff. Oh, that, that was going to be... Yeah, generally what you do, without belaboring the point, is you, you really strive to uh, take water that's brackish and desalinate it near the ocean so that when you... The, the, half the water is fresh, half is double salty, and that double salty matches the ocean if you do it right, and you just discharge the half that didn't make it through back into the ocean. It's sort of a concentrating mechanism where you separate fresh water from saltier. So that's normally what's done. Some cases they take raw salt water and then they have salt as a background. They either dump it in the ocean or try to find a market for it. Yeah. Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Lobby, for your testimony. Thank you very much.